Hello everyone. Today I'm going to be starting this new series called School Math versus Contest Math. Basically I'm going to talk about two different problems of the same type, uh, the same mathematical type, but one problem is something you would see in a high school or a middle school, and another problem would be something you would see in a contest. And we would see the differences, but also the similarities in these two problems. So first I got this pretty simple question right here. What is the max value of y equals x squared plus 6x plus 8? So there are many ways of doing this, but I would just do it this way. We know that the vertex is going to be at negative b over 2a. First, I'll write this down. We got y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. We know this, so all we have to do is correlate these a, b, and c values with this function right here. In this case, x is just, or sorry, a is just 1, and b is 6. So we can use the formula for a vertex, which is negative b over 2a, to find the x value of the maximum value. So negative b over 2a is just equal to negative 6 over 2 times 1. That is equal to negative 3. So our x value for a maximum value is negative 3. You plug that into here, we get, well, I'll write down negative 3 squared plus 6 times negative 3 plus 8. So it's just simple arithmetic at this point. So it's just 9 minus 18 plus 8. So it's negative 1. So that was pretty easy. That's pretty much what you would see in any algebra-based uh, high school class or middle school class of some sort. Now let's look at a much, much more difficult contest math problem. Booyah. What is the maximum value of this scary looking function here? 2 times, uh, 2 to the power of x minus 3x, all times x, and all of that divided by 4 to the power of x. My, oh my, where, where do we even start here? Okay, we cannot use the vertex formula for this. Negative b over 2a, how do we correlate y equals ax squared plus bx plus c to this value? We can't, so we have to find some other way to solve this. Now, the, mo the best way, in my opinion, to solve this is using the am hyphen gm inequality, which I will be talking about in a later video. I'll be making a video on that. But basically, what the AMGM inequality is, the AMGM inequality, is that it's saying that the arithmetic mean of two terms, or any number of terms, is always greater than or equal to the geometric mean of those terms. So what we can do is that we can equate two expressions to each other, and then we can have and then we can use algebra to manipulate this function on the geometric mean side so we can get this function is always less than or equal to some type of value therefore it would be our maximum value so let's do that so the hardest part of this would be to pick the two terms we would use in our amgm inequality what terms should we use if we use 2x, 2 to the power of x minus 3x as one term, and then x divided by 4 to the power of x as another, we wouldn't be able to manipulate it afterwards cleverly in this way again on the other side. So the best way to manipulate this uh, into an AMGM inequality is like this. I'll show you. So we have 2 to the power of x minus 3x as our first term, and then our second term is 3x. So, this may sound a little crazy. I mean, it doesn't even make sense. You have 2 to the power of x minus 3x plus 3x. Shouldn't these 3x's just cancel out? Well, you'll see in a bit why you should choose the AMG inequality like this. So, arithmetic mean, an arithmetic mean adds two terms together and then divides by the number of terms, in this case, 2. So, this is our arithmetic mean right here. And the AMGM inequality says that it's always greater than or equal to the geometric mean, which is the product of these two terms and then the square root of those two terms. So that means it is the square root of 2 to the power of x minus 3x 
times 3x. So now, if you know, if you think you can manipulate it into this function, you're pretty much done at this point. But I'll do it for you right now. So first, obviously, we can cancel this stuff out. We remember we want there to be actual integer values over here. We don't want any variables over here. We want all the variable values over here so we can equate this as a maximum value of some sort. So let me move the camera here. Now we have two to the power of x minus three x plus three x. So these two cancel out, take that out. And then we can change this two to the power of x divided by two as two to the power of x minus one. So this is exp uh, exponent uh, subtraction right here because you're dividing a two from this two to the power of x. And then you have greater than or equal to, again, the square root of this. But I'm not gonna write that down because I'm gonna first square both sides because we don't want the square root here. There's no square root in the original function. And remember, we want the original function to be over here. We wanna manipulate it for an original function to be here. So let's square both sides. So let's square this. And then squaring this will get rid of the square root. So we just have two to the power of x minus three x times three x. Nice. All right, so what do we do next? We can bring this two inside and, and uh, have it as two to the power of two times uh, uh, x minus one, therefore getting four to the power of x minus one is greater than or equal to this function. Now, what can we do next? All right, look, we have two to the power of x minus three of x times three of x. In the numerator in our original function, I'll move over here so the shadow doesn't cover it, we have two to the power of x minus three x times x. Not times three x, but just times x. We wanna get rid of this three, so we're gonna divide it on both sides. So on this side, we have divided by three. And this side, we just have the original equation, two to the power of x minus three x times x. So we have, believe it or not, our numerator right here. So that's awesome. We're almost done, as you can see here. How do we get this denominator over here? Well, we just have to divide on both sides, four to the power of x. So let's divide this by four to the power of x, and let's divide this term by four to the power of x, like that. And we are done, as you can see here. Let's simplify this. Four to the power of x minus one divided by four to the power of x. The two x's cancel out with each other, so you're left with four to the power of negative one divided by three, Bringing the 4 to the power of negative 1 on the denominator, you get 1 over 4 times 3, which is 1 twelfth. And 1 twelfth in the expression here is greater than or equal to this function. And we have it. This is our maximum value. Now, I know, if you've never seen the AMGM inequality and you really don't know that much about contest math, this seems extremely daunting. We literally got from here to here in, in an intense algebraic way, and we have to know a lot of tricks for it. But that's the thing about contest math, and that's the thing I wanna talk about in this series, contest math versus school math. I wanna talk about how schools don't teach you really good problem solving skills, but these contest math questions do. Now, if you do know calculus, you know that it's possible to calculate this maximum value using calculus, using the what we call the quotient rule. But if you don't know calculus, that's okay. But if you do, try doing that on this equation. Now you can see, now if you try that, just know it's gonna be really, really hairy. And there's still a lot of uh, algebraic manipulation you're gonna to have to do uh, in order to find the maximum value. But keep in mind that if you do use calculus to find this, you will get the right answer. It's just gonna be a lot more difficult than how we did it over here. All right, and that about covers it up. If you have any questions, please comment down below. And uh, one more thing, this is actually a real contest math problem. This is the 2020, oops, 2020 AMC 12B number 22. Right there, wrote it kind of weird, but if you comment that, uh, sorry, if you type that in, then you will find the whole test. I including a link in the description if you need it. And yeah, that's it. Thanks for watching, guys.